G'day Starlo here. The depths of winter are often regarded by a lot of people as the off season and they tend to pack their tackle away, especially down in our southern latitudes where it does get very cold. <laughs> but I find that I get some of my best fishing in winter. And the other thing is that there are just no crowds in the spots. It's fantastic. It was a beautiful day today. It was very, very cold earlier on. So I actually waited for it to warm up a bit. Not much wind has come up, a little bit of a nor'easter. So I've actually come out to sea out of my local port. And I'm doing something that I really enjoy doing. And that's drifting for sand flathead. Oh, oh and there's one. A wonderful way to get a fresh feed of fish. Now some days you catch a lot of sand flathead that are too small to bother about keeping. 33 centimetres is the minimum legal limit here in New South Wales, but I regard that as a bit too small. I like them to be at least 35 or 36. So some days you get three or four undersized ones for every legal, and then other days you get a really nice run of fish. This doesn't feel like a particularly big one, but it was first drop, so you can't complain about that. I actually don't mind this little bit of breeze. It's just got a nice drift going for me. And there we go, that's what I'm after. Now that, believe it or not, is a legal sand flathead, definitely over the 33, but I'm gonna put it back because I'm pretty sure that I can do better than that. The rig I'm using here is rather interesting. It's actually one of the Shimano Baku Baku jigs, but the leather jackets ate all the skirt off it, and I'm just using it as a bait rig now. Bit of squid on there, and it works like a charm. All right, I'll get this one back in, see if we can find a bigger sand flathead. Righto, so we send the bait down. I'm in about 46 meters of water here, so it takes a little while to get to the bottom. I like overhead gear for this style of fishing because you've got a lot of control and you can tell when your line gets to the bottom, perhaps a little more easily than you can with spin gear, I reckon. Gotta be getting fairly close now. And there we are, we're on the bottom. There's bites. Oh, missed him. Just drop it back to the bottom again. Sometimes you've just got to let out a little bit more line to stay in contact. There's a reasonable drift today. Getting bites, but they're not great. Yeah, that's a better bite. I don't know what this is. It doesn't feel like a flathead. I'm not getting the usual head shakes and kicks. It's just a lot of weight. It takes a little while to crank them up from 46 meters. <laughs> just try to keep the pressure smooth and constant. You'll drop less that way. Uh -huh. It's a little banjo shark. <laughs> Oh, what a little cutie. Mate, you're flat, but you're not what I was after. <laughs> you get a bit of bycatch. It's to be expected. Sometimes that bycatch takes the form of tasty, hard-fighting gummy sharks, which are always welcome on our boat. Other times you might catch gurnard and latchet, which are also delicious table fish, as well as being spectacular in appearance. A bit like the goat fish and the pig fish that also show up in these waters and occasionally come aboard. We like them too. Snapper and mowong also turn up on the flatty grounds at times, especially if you drift across gravel patches or broken reef. Again, they're always welcome. But when we're drifting on sandy ground in anything from 15 to 50 plus metres of water from southern Queensland all the way to Tasmania, it's one of a handful of closely related fish known as sand or blue spot flathead that we're targeting. They're not as big as the dusky flathead that live in our estuaries, but they can still reach a decent size and they're absolutely delicious to eat. As you move out into deeper water, you'll start to encounter a few tiger flathead as well. These have a more cylindrical body and a different pattern on the tail. And if anything, I reckon they're even better to eat than the sandies. There are other flathead varieties too, lots of them. It's a big family and identification often comes down to that distinctive tail pattern. <laughs> but they're all tasty.
Sand flathead aren't usually fussy. They'll respond to a wide range of baits or lures fished right on the seabed or just above it, ideally on the drift. As I said, some days you'll need to wade through quite a few undersized or barely legal flatties to find some better ones. Handle the little ones with care and respect and return them to the water immediately to give them the best possible chance of surviving to grow and breed. Keep only what you need and can immediately use and look after your catch. Even in winter, that means killing them straight away by icky jimmy brain spiking them and then chilling the catch in a slurry of seawater and ice. The meat yield from larger flathead is actually pretty good and they're nowhere near as hard to fillet and debone as some people seem to think. In fact, I reckon they're one of the easiest species to deal with in this department. I actually dedicated a whole YouTube video to filleting flathead and you'll find a link to it here on the screen or in the description and the comments down below. There's also a video on my channel showcasing icky jimmy brain spiking, caring for the catch, and a couple of simple but delicious recipes that work really well with flathead. Don't overlook the humble sand flathead as a viable target, especially in the off season. They're fun to catch and great to eat. What more could you ask for? Until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines. Thank you.